What's up, YouTube, man? This is Monday morning. Big Rojo, big Flacco right in you. Smashing, dashing, sliding on through us. What, 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 what? A little bit of energy. What's up, y'all? Hey, as you can tell by the title, man, Flacco's got some stories about uh, getting it in on them streets, man. Some serious stuff, some funny stuff, man. Y'all don't want to miss this one, so I'm going to let Flacco do what he does best. Because Flacco is the mouthpiece on this channel because he can tell them stories, boy. What do you got, Flacco? Okay, we're going to talk about regimental activities out there in 2005 and like a major incident that happened, man. And the end of the story, you guys are going to laugh at where my thinking process was and what was going on, man. So I've told my story before around 2005. I was given jurisdiction to start recruiting people and establishing crews out there on the streets. Um, in Milpitas, I had two people that were working under me, submitted their names. They were contributing monthlies. I also had a hood out there in, in the east side of San Jose where I was pulling someone as an NR member. I'm not going to mention his name, but um, he was from a major hood out there in the east side of San Jose where I was plugged in with that hood that, where they were contributing every month, as well as in other areas. So I had established a whole lot, long line of crews out there, and I had a lot of activities going on out there. I had a, a you know, a legit um, escort business that we were, we were running through Craigslist that me and a, a, a Cardinal we invested in. Um, I was running a lot of meth every week, anywhere from five to 10 pounds of meth, even more sometimes, a lot of A1, and as well as the this pills, man. And I had established everything a lot within the area where I was at, out there in Milpitas, right? Now, so I had a lot of safe spots. And what I was doing at that time is I had a lot of youngsters from the hood, right? And they know exactly. I had one location in Indian Hills, one, one location off uh, Park Victoria, and we kept on moving them, right? Now, one of the individuals at that time came out to the streets on parole, a good homie, I'm not going to mention his name, rest in peace, though. Um, he was one of my seconds, right, that was supposed to take care of any business if anything happened to me. So I was using location where his brother was at, his mom, and another homeboy that was staying there as one of my safe house locations. This ended up being his parole address, right? So he ended up getting a whole other address in the same apartment complex. But he was using the other address as his parole address. So we were using this as, as a safe house at that time, right? And let's just bear in mind, I had a lot of stuff going on, man. I mean, between all the hoods that were contributing, I was contributing a lot of money that was coming from these hoods. It was either $150 a month for those crews to, to kick in, whether they were selling dope or not. If you were, uh, if you were pushing dope, you had, to push two, you had to kick in $200 a month. Plus, you had to get the dope from me. So that's how my operations were going. Now, at that time, I was talking to the RSD out there in San Jose. Now... Out of everybody out there, there was a lot of canals out there in the streets, right? A lot of regiments, a lot of crews. I, I, had a, I had a pretty big crew out there, like in different areas, and we'd work together. And one thing that none of us were dived into at that time was the fizz pills, right? So we started pushing a lot of fizz pills, right? And then there were some, some Africanos that came down from Oakland that were living on a block called Selwyn, right? A dude named Big John, right? And I was advised, like, okay, why don't you guys go over there and try to get them to work with us, to sell for us. So one of the youngsters was over there and they pressed up on him and, be, and, and beat his ass, right? They jumped him. So then me, my, my second and his little brother, we catch this dude, Big John, a big old Africano slipping in the apartment complex and we jam him up. So we end up, sma he, get, he gets smashed one-on-one. -on -one. And the homeboy that smashed on him was little than him, but had hands. And this is like a dude that's like about you know, six fucking three, 300 pounds and homeboy's just welling on him. He's just taking it. I don't know if it was our presence that he was scared of or whatnot, right? But I had reported the incident. I kind of got a little backlash. Well, you know, you were supposed to get those guys to work with us and this and that. I'm like, man, so be it, man. Right, so we had that incident going on, right? Now, there's a lot of stuff we were doing at that time, man, like from like kicking in doors, I'd send squads, get information. A lot of things were going on at that time, man, and... One of the youngsters, same youngster that smashed on that Africano, okay, he had ended up smashing, up smashing on one of these Asian cats, the Rice Rockets. Now, anybody knows these Asian cats don't play around. They're strapped up. You know what I mean? You put hands on one of them one-on-ones, they're coming back to shoot. So I pull up at the location, right, and I go in the apartment and stuff, man, and figuring out I got, I got work, I got this and that. Next thing you know, there's a whole bunch of these cars going by, man, and, and like they tell me what happened. I'm like, oh, these dudes are going to, you know what I mean? And someone mentioned that one of the dudes had a gun. So I'm over there like, man, what do we do? There's no strap in the house, right? So I start making calls. And I mean, we're like, everybody's like looking out the window. I go grab a, a big butcher knife, right? I'm like, man, what are we going to do, man? I'm like, fuck it. 
let me call these homeboys from the east side up. I call the homeboy that's working with me from, from a certain hood. They start sma they start smashing from all the way from out there in the east side of San Jose, all the way out there to Milpitas. Okay. I said, all right. Okay. Tell me when you're about 30 seconds away and we're running out the house. And this is when Halloween, now the, the squad from fucking out there in San Jose, they can't, they had fucking Halloween mask on, all kinds of fucking shit, right? So I'm like, I'm telling these youngsters, I have three youngsters in the house. I'm like, all right, let's get ready. One, two. And we just come out the house all fucking crazy, right? There's no one fucking there. So I see these homeboys from San Jose, right, that are right there, that are walking, that all this, this whole crew works under me. We thought they next end up starting rushing the wrong fucking dude. You know what I'm saying? So I got all this stuff going on. We have funk with the Africanos. We have funk that kicked off with the Asians all in the town, right? So I relocated everything to one particular house, right? And I went and picked up a 45 and a nine. So this is where my second house is at, right? So we're over there posted up, right? And I'm thinking, damn, man, we got funk with these dudes, with these cats over here, man. The youngsters got into with some MS cats that just out of nowhere and shit to try to pull a machete on them. I'm like, shit's kicking off out here, bro. So we're posted up. I got maybe about 800 and some fizz pills in this house about a half pound of meth and about two ounces of, 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 some, of some Yoda, of some uh, soda in there, right? And we're talking to the youngsters, right? And one of them has one of the, one of the quet days, right? So we're I'm, I'm lacing them up and we're, we're, we're planning on how we're gonna uh, uh, change things because I had more than one safe house at that time. This house I wanted to focus on is having more of the fizz pills because that was a department this homeboy was supposed to be in charge of, was the fizz pills. I was giving him something that would just be directly for him to make the money off of. And just kick in a little bit something I, I got coming out. I'll have to plug on the fizz pills. I'll drop a boatload to you, get rid of them. So we're posted up, and I'm not paying attention, but he's showing a little youngster, right? A little, little 19 year old homeboy from the hood. You know what I mean? What's cracking? So he drops a fucking clip, right? Now, you know, and I know what happens when you drop the clip. What's still in the chamber? Right? Yeah. So this is my safe house, bro. He pulls the trigger while we're in the house. Boom, right? Bam. I fucking, I swear to God, I shit you not, bro. I thought the fucking NF or someone was fucking after me, bro. I start yelling, they're trying to kill me, bro. I start ducking and shit, right? I'm thinking like, what the fuck did I do? You know what I mean? I'm thinking, man, everything's been going good. You know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, I have a whole bunch of homeboys, man. I start the whole block, man. We had to rush through the house and get everything fucking out of there. Back to the original house that, where my first safe house was at, man. But I mean, that's the kind of stuff that was going on, man. And like I said, man, it was love. Uh, you just have to have been there and seen my fucking facial expression, Rojo. Like, literally, when I hear the gunshot, I duck down and I tell everybody, they're trying to kill me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not thinking it's anybody in the house. I'm thinking that fucking I'm being monitored. And I'm trying to think, where did I fuck up? Did I owe money? Did I step on somebody's toes? Because I, I didn't think at first it was the Africanos. I didn't think it was the Asians. I thought it was the, I was, I thought it was the NF. I thought something, I did something fucking wrong. That someone tried to smut me up, man. But little, little be known, it was fucking our gun. Homeboy dropped the clip, shoots it off in the fucking house. You know what I mean? Next thing you know, I got to tell all these youngsters, grab the shit, and all you see is a bunch of youngsters running with fucking, you know, a, a bag full of fizz pills, bro. Fucking two guns, fucking, you know what I mean? Everything. We had to get everything the fuck out of there, man. But that's the kind of shit that was going on at that time, man. Like, just out there in the regiment. I just thought it was like, like I said, I think um, we tell a lot of stories about the things that we do, right? And this was just a raw, real situation, man, that I thought was, man, I thought it was comical, bro. Hey, man, check this out, bro. Speaking of hustling and stuff like that, man, when I was doing my thing real well, let's say the year's probably, it's the end of 98 going into 99 at some point in time, man. And, you know, I was out there, I had a house in, uh, man, either in Martinez or Concord. I don't remember which one at this particular incident, but, uh, so when I first started hustling, I had never hustled the biker type stuff. We'll call it biker type stuff so YouTube don't get mad, but use your common sense. You know what I mean? I started hustling that, man. Met up with Eminem, all this and that. And uh, it took a little persuading to get me to do it because I had never messed with that particular item before. So I get a couple, just a couple zips to start off with, man. It takes me like a week to get rid of them. You know, I talk to the homeboys. They know some people go back, get a Q, takes me about a week, go back and get a P, takes me about four days, go back and get two Ps, takes me like three days, go back and get three, it's gone in a day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we start moving, right? Well, 
I pretty much at the end of this time, man, I was I was killing it and all the way from like uh the, the rich area, you know, Wanna Creek, you know, Pleasant Hill, all the way to the end of Antioch. Discovery Bay, Brentwood, they were pretty much irrelevant back then. Oakley, all the little towns, they were still roping cattle and shit. So one spot I meet, right? I, I got I got a homeboy from VCN from Barrio Concord North. End. <clears throat> he stayed, he just happened to move out to uh this little trailer park, bro. It's in the middle of nowhere. You take this, you could take a long back route from Concord to Antioch, <clears throat> and like two-thirds of the way to there, there's a trailer park just like in the middle of the mountains, essentially. But it's a big one, bro. It's probably got I don't remember the exact amount of units, so we'll call it 70 just to be on the safe side. It could be a couple more, could be a couple less. Everybody in there, except maybe two or three homes, were those bottom of the barrel, barefoot, no teeth, tweaker types. Hey, so I got my homeboys out there hustling, especially around the first, because they're all on general assistance. You know what I'm saying? You got your couple little mechanics and your rooters and stuff like that, but for the most part, it's all government money out there. So right about the first second, man, I ended up, I'd start sliding out there. You know what I mean? Cause it's, it's, it's a pretty safe route. You know, you're in the middle of nowhere. I'd slide up, bro. And I swear to God, after like the first two or three months, when I'd pull up, there'd be a crowd of zombies, bro. Like damn near applauding a, 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 a guy when he pulled in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They'd be all happy. Hey, nasty ass dope fiends would try to be bringing me plates of food and stuff because they knew you know what i'm saying they knew i mean they didn't know because i never dealt with any of them individually people aren't stupid you know what i'm saying so i slide up i had this one dude he was a wood and he stayed in this trailer out there and so i'd pull up man at first i you know i had homeboys that lived out there because my boy little david he was like my little right hand man little david from bcn as well he was a youngster, bro, but he was solid. He was probably only like 16, 17, but he had it. You know what I'm saying? He he was going to be my protege for sure. I took him under my wing and laced him with everything. But so him and my boy Silent would be out there overseeing everything. You know what I'm saying? Well, this one dude made friends with me. He was he was a tweaker, but he was one of those kind that was functional. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. He's like, hey, you know, I like to dip off into uh, Brentwood and Oakley and stuff and your homeboys. They won't give me nothing to work with, man. I was wondering. And I sat on it for, you know, a day. I'm like, man, well, he lives right there. There's nowhere he could go. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, they'll find him if he does something. So I, I gave him a cue. Go back out there, give him half. And I didn't like making more than one trip. You know, I go out there one time a month, drop off something chunky. So I, I start dealing with him, though. And, and it, you know, I get him all the way up to like a P. Well, <laughs> check, out how, check out this fool. I go out there one day and he's like, hey, I need to pee. I got you, bro. whoop de whoop And what I do is I'd walk right up in this trailer. There's a trailer in there that was empty, but nobody, you couldn't tell by looking at it. It was, it looked like somebody lived there. Curtains and everything. I go up in there and what I would do is I had like a little, kind of like a satchel, kind of like a fanny pack type of thing that I'd carry in there with me, empty. A fanny pack? <laughs> it, similar, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think I think it actually was a fanny pack. So you could run, right? Well, just, it. Anyway, check it out. <laughs> Whatever the case might be. So I go in there with that thing empty. He give me the cash. I'd stuff it in there, whatever, and, and you know, hand him his thing. Bounce. Hey, this fool, bro. Check it out, man. One time I go in there, man. I think he owed me. I, let's let's just call it five G's. It's right around there somewhere. And uh, man, I've been dealing with him. I didn't even trip. Took the money, stuffed it in the pouch. I bounced. A couple days go by. I hit up uh I hit up my homeboy Mexican Mike. I'm like, hey, I got that. Whoopie whoopie whoop. Slide out to see him, man. Give him a big old stack of cash, bro. You know, nice 10 inch stack of cash. You know what I'm saying? I bounce. He calls me back. When I get back to the crib, you know, I'm there a half hour. He's like, hey, like uh 4,500 of them dollars were fake. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here, bro. Right. And so I'm thinking, bro, and I know he wouldn't lie to me. You know what I mean? He has one of the machines, even back in the nineties that would kick out all the fakes. So, uh, I start thinking back in my head, I'm like, man, where the hell could I pick up 4,800 in fake? Bro, this fool must've gave me like one real bill on top, one real bill on the bottom. And I just stuffed it in there without even tripping, never paid any more attention to it. You know what I mean? 
And I wouldn't even really count the snaps, man. Either little David or Olin or one of them fools would count the snaps. So nobody even tripped, bro. So I go back out there looking for this dude, bro. He's gone, bro. I never seen him again, man. He pulled the he pulled an ultimate fedangle on me, man. But uh, and it was crazy, bro. This this was like Rojo's personal New Jack City, except with with the biker stuff and white people, bro. It it was yeah, unre- it was unreal. No way. Hey, I've had a couple of those situations where I got locked up and they try to pay with funny money and all that, bro. But you know, it's it's some of the stuff that goes on, man. Like I said. What people don't realize, right, as big and, and as authoritative as we are in prison and out there on the streets, doesn't mean that we're subject to everybody else's rules. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, like when the incident happened with me, right, all this stuff that was was going on, man, I, I wasn't tripping off these dudes. Any of these guys could get it. We had soldiers. We had crews. We had. I would just call some homeboys from out of area to come down and handle it, which I which I've done in the past. But this, man, me not paying attention, man, and hearing the gunshot, bro, like, the first thing I thought in my head, like, I, I swear to God to you, Rojo was fucking, they're trying to kill me. Exactly. And I said it, they're trying, I'm like, they're trying to kill me, and I fucking start ducking and shit on the fucking floor and shit, and I'm all paranoid, and then fucking, I turn the right, and I look at the homeboy, he's like this and shit, and there's smoke coming from the gun. His brother's on dope. So for fucking three days, the bullet went right past his brother. For, so for three days, his brother is tripping and he gets paranoid and schizophrenia right, right when he's on that shit because we would we would tell him that we didn't want him using so for three days he thought his brother was trying to kill him you know and, and i mean fortunately nobody got shot man but that's that's the kind of like i said i was trying to bring it up man just to tell a different story as far as man like shit happens out there man like even when we're in the mix doing things there's certain things like when you're involved out there to generate money it's a treacherous world man it's a dog eat world. Anybody can get it at any time, you know? And it's just the whole mindset, man, is, is as smooth as you sometimes think you're selling and you got everything established out there, you're gonna have to deal with some misfit situations like this, man. And sometimes you even have to bite, bite it, you know what I mean? And just let it go, you know what I mean? Is it worth the consequences? Is the cause and effect outweighs everything else. Sometimes people's pride gets in the way. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's better off just to let bygones be bygones, let, let it be. When you can catch up to that person, deal with it later, man. You know, but um, yeah, I was definitely stirring up some shit out there, bro. Like, there, there was fucking jokes out there from fucking some of the carnals out there in San Jose because sometimes they, their business would try to would, uh, uh, intervene in what I had going on out there and I would complain. Like, keep that shit out of here. So they would make, they would make fucking little comments like, I want a fucking fence around the whole fucking city that I only wanted me to be able to do business out there. No, I just don't want you intervening in what I got going on. And the way I had everything rolled for a minute, bro, was it was smooth because I'd have, like I said, I would have people from different hoods associated with me. One of them, you know, and what it was is a lot of them wanted to be pulled as bros. So I was recruiting them as a bro. And this was a set standard of recruiting them on the streets. Okay, well, I need you to, I need you to bring two people, establish a crew out there and work directly with us. And this is how much money you have to contribute. If you can do this for six months, I'll get your status stamped. You know what I'm saying? So I'd have a homeboy out here in Sunnyvale. I'd have a homeboy out here in San Jose in this hood. I was plugged to two major hoods out there in San Jose to where they were they were dealing directly with me. You know what I'm saying? And those from those hoods, they know. They know what I'm saying, man. There was an issue where one time a homeboy ended up getting stabbed, right? Um, he ended up getting stabbed, bro. And I found out about the issue before even, uh, 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 I don't know if you know Wino Samuel, right? Um, okay, he, he was a carnal out there from fucking the west side, Samuel Wino. Uh, Wino. I, it was his crew that was involved in it, right? That, you know, they overstepped their boundaries. They ended up hitting another homeboy with some BS. I ended up getting that information from his, about what his crew did to someone that was working directly under me before he even did. So we'd have to have sit-downs, man. So there's like, it's... I can honestly say this, man, you know, at the time when I was out there around that time, man, there was a lot of money being generated, man. But when you have that many people who are actively in the mix, there's a lot of conflict. There's a lot of turmoil. There's a lot of hating. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of campaigning. There's a lot of stepping on toes. You know what I mean? There's a lot of shit, though, man. Money's powerful. So let me ask you, right, you know, when you was out there doing your thing in the East Bay, did you come across any other active crews or regiments that were out there in that same area? Bro, I was, <clears throat> we're not gonna say I was super paranoid because that wasn't the case really. We'll say I was just very reluctant 
for anybody to know my business that I didn't know personally, you know, before any type of gang stuff, before any type of NR, NF, even, even hood shit, bro. My focus was on <clears throat> civilians more so than any type of gang members, bro. You know, uh, all, my, all my stash houses were girls that worked, that had never been in trouble, that lived at their parents' house. You know what I mean? I man, we used to. I used to have this spot in this yeah. garage, and I took off some drywall one day when this chick's parents weren't there. Took off the drywall, bottom and second sheet. You know what I mean? Took out the damn insulation, put product down there, rescrewed the drywall back in with just a couple screws. Had fake little things that I put into the, you know the, you know the things that hold bikes, the long ass uh, hooks with big old screws on them and you get them in there and they hold bikes up. Yeah. I had those going through regular drywall, not into no studs. You know what I mean? So it looked like it was into the studs, but it wasn't. And it would just be tacked in with like six screws. I'd stash stuff all the way down to the first one. So if I had to come back there, what I'd do is I'd take off the top piece real quick when her folks weren't home. And I'd take one of those grabbers, you know, like old people have them things that reach out and grab stuff. I just reach down reach in there, grab the bag and pull it out. So I didn't have to take off the bottom piece of rock. Cause you know, you can't get your hand all yeah. the way down to the bottom, but you know, to make a long story short, I avoided any other type of gang members that weren't my own. You know what I mean? And usually nine times out of 10, I would associate with them, but there would be no, no type of hand to hand stuff. So you, you main dudes who I would send to go do that. So you kind of operated more incognito a little I bit. I isolated myself to the fullest. Yeah. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you this, 90 percent of the people I ever dealt with, I mean, they knew I was a homie, but they had no clue about none of the rest of the stuff. Mexican Mike knew, Lil David knew, O Dog knew, this, you know, what I mean, there might have been five or six people who really knew, and they didn't even understand because as everybody knows, Contra Costa in the 90s historically it wasn't a very powerful stronghold and people just didn't have that type of education man i was dealing with girls and white dudes and filipinos and yeah me too there was a couple gang members and shit where you know mexican mike would bring me around them i wouldn't even i would just be chilling bro having a drink playing dominoes it wasn't for no business it would yeah see that's that's people would know they'd be like that dude's somebody but they wouldn't know no you know so that's what we used to do, man. Like, there's like, would you say that there's three components to to running your, your your crew activities out there? I say there's three. I say one, there's either you know incognito, uh, uh, employing uh, uh, your resources that are kind of low key. The second one is force. You know what I mean? Where you go in and force your way. You know what I mean? You go over there and kind of kind of is, ex, ex, you know, extort and all that. And then the third is by reputation. There's a lot of people. I'm going to tell you like this and keep it 100. A lot of times by what I was representing out there, right? Yeah. I was able to accomplish so much without even having to take action just by status or just by what I was representing. I'm, I'm here on behalf of the mob. You know what I mean? For the O, these are the activities. I'm under the bandera. And that's that. You know what I mean? And people would comply. You wouldn't have to get forceful. But then, then, then if you want to be smart, like I said, we used to employ different people of different races, right? And I would isolate myself. I'd have young homeboys. I had I had a protege that was out there, a youngster that was working for me, and he used to run everything. He used to pick up, drop off everything, right? But then he would also be out there in the mix and know these people out there that are out there in the streets that are trying to get their hustle. We used to employ a lot of them to go on these fucking trap spots to find out who was doing what, where they were getting it from. And they would be other races, and we'd basically kick, we'd kick them in some dope. And then once I found out, what location was doing what? There's a couple spots where I showed up and said, look, this is what I can do for you. I know you're moving about two zips a day. You know what I mean? I'll drop you four. You know what I'm saying? At this price, I'll drop you. And if you keep on going, I'll drop you eight. And that's how it established, you know what I mean? Resources out there. Now, because I'm going to tell you like this, messing around with homeboys out there in the streets, it's not always lucrative. When you start to mess around with those other races that have these trap spots, and then I would say, look, you're not going to have to deal with me. You're not going to have to see me. This youngster's is going to come pick up and drop off. You know what I'm saying? And then I'd isolate myself from the situation, generate a whole lot of money. Yeah, man. Hey, basically the person who took care of a, a lot of the <clears throat> the cash type of stuff, man, was a chick, a white chick. You know what I mean? Rock solid. She was, she was, she was, she was a homegirl. 
you know what I mean? But you would never know. You know what I'm saying? Like she had a, she always maintained a job, lived at home with her parents, went to work, never been in no trouble. <clears throat> Excuse me. I look for stuff like that, bro, because where you, where you're from, people understand the whole, oh, the whole history, the whole, they know that it's a force to reckon with. Where I was from, if you said, hey, I'm here on behalf of the mob, they think you were pretending like you were in the mafia and shit. You know what I mean? It, it was, you know how it was. I mean, you've been out in Contra Costa, even you were out there later, but you know, it's not a, the only, there's, there's two hot spots in the east side. There's, well, now there's, now there's a couple more, but Pittsburgh's always been about that action and Concord to a lesser extent. Now, don't get me wrong. Concord's got a lot of hoods with a lot of members. There's hundreds of Northerners from Concord, but they weren't really banging or even hustling that hard. They were more like they chilled and barbecued. You know what I mean? If they seen somebody, they may or may not do nothing from the opposition. They might just be like, ah, fuck them fools. They might go send three youngsters to beat them up real quick one time. But um, the historical significance of the organization and, and even just the, the direction that of the of the Norteño movement, it just wasn't embedded in Concord, Pittsburgh, and Antioch back then. Now don't get me wrong. And I'll tell you one thing that contributed a lot to the change of that was Woody. Woody putting that music out there and talking, that pumped up a lot of homeboys. That was like the first influential dude that got a lot of shit together because people started uniting behind them songs and then G-U-N and then all this and that. And that's why we talk about rappers having influence and, and, and people taking it. Okay, what if I drop the album tomorrow? It, it, there'd be hella youngster listening to me. If I didn't, if you didn't know me, I changed my name to, to Mr. Ghost, Mr. White Boy, whatever the fuck. People <laughs> be listening to me, bro, and it's weird. Casper from Morgan Hill. You feel, you feel me? Orale, Casper, Simon. Hey, and it's weird to me because I'm still the same dude, but now just because I rap, you think like I'm some type of important figure in everything. There's no rapper out there, at least among the Northerners, that is an important figure, bro. That's just how it is. But anyway, these people had a lot of influence out there and brought a lot of stuff together. Now, don't get me wrong. Pittsburgh, all the way back to the days of, of VPC, like basically the original Pittsburgh hood, East Side Pittsburgh, rolling 20s. They've always been about that action. And now CAL, the most dominant group out there by far, man, hundreds of members, and, and, and they're very, very active out there. It's changed. You know, it'd be real easy to go out there and, and, and make things happen nowadays. In my time, shit, bro. You would have to use violence amongst your own people to get them to understand what you're talking about. And I've always been very, very anti-violence because I know this is what's going to happen from Gunner. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, there's a white guy out here who says he's in an organization and he's telling me if I don't sell dope for him, he's going to do weird things to my bum. I hope. That's what's going to happen out there. You, you know, but see, like, where I, where I was from, you didn't have to do that. There was a exactly. lot of willing people, yeah. bro. But then and at so, the same time, you're hotter down there, too, because people know. But see, that's where you isolate yourself. See, this is what I didn't understand about a lot of individuals, right? They would, okay, if we're picking up so much weight, right? literally a lot of weight every week. You know what I mean? I had the notion that I'd rather drop off to certain workers, drop them off two, four, eight zips at a time. And I didn't have to make that much off each zip. Because if I'm moving, okay, if, if I'm moving 160 zips a week and I'm making, and I'm making, a, okay, and I'm making 75 bucks per zip, right? That's 1,200 per pound. That's 12 racks per week. And even if you have someone get caught up, get busted, or come up short, the money's still coming in, bro. Yeah. You're still I can in, afford you're still that. In the positive. Yeah. I'm still in the positive, bro. Right? And so, see, like, let's let's just get real about how cutthroat it is in the game, bro. And anybody out there that's worked under these reg uh, regiments and all that on the streets and, and owes money to people, I used to like it when someone would get in debt with me. Because this brought all the resources I need from, from cuetes to cars to everything, and then I could dictate the price of the work I was providing them. Yeah. So if someone came up short and they still owe me $300, this is where people get messed up. They don't provide them work no more. It's just gonna happen out in the streets. You gotta keep on flooding your workers with work. Let them make that money back up. And they're gonna respect that, that, that opportunity you give them. You don't take no weaknesses. If they start hiding, you go smash in their houses and make an example. I've done that hella times. I've gone into houses, ma'am, 
we're all saying homeboy's up in there and we took every fucking thing in the house. The dude pays me back and I keep all the shit anyways. Just to set an example. Not, true story, man. Okay. True story, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey. Yeah, I'll hold. Hey. I mean, that's what No, 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 no. That, like. hey, the homeboy actually talks to me to this day that I took all his shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? It is well, what it is, bro. If he's got any more shit, I need some shit. Well, I mean, you know, the reason why was is when we went up in there, he had a bunch of yes got too. So I'm like, okay, you're making this money. You're not paying really, me the money. I think, hey, hey, the bad thing about it was, I think it was only like $300, man, but it ended up being like a $1,500 profit on my end. It is what it is, bro. Hey, when, you when hey, the very few times that I've had to resort to, to having people take things, you know what we called that? Back in the days, it was the orderly gracias. That was the name of the operation. You got to go, hey, take everything of value. Straight but up. see, that's that's, 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 that, few times that's the last resort, though, bro. That is the last resort, man. You know what I mean, like, no, the last you resort that, is this. That's the last yeah. resort. Well, you know what I mean. That's not, okay. the, yeah, yeah. That's one of the final resorts because once you do something, you debo both someone, they're gonna have hard feelings against you. Yeah. They're gonna have animosity. They're gonna have hate. Therefore, they're not gonna want to help you with anything. They're not gonna try to work with you. If something, because okay, there's a lot of people out there in the mix, even these regular John Doe's out there, they're trying to hustle. They come across shit all the time that are lucrative. They come across different resources, stuff that goes on in Humboldt County, out-of-state issues. They're not going to take these ventures and give them to you. If you treat people right and they know what you're capable of, they're going to they're gonna come and present these possible ventures that could be beneficial towards you in the long run. And that's happened hella times for me. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. We never, we never had to put them into effect, man. But uh, along with Mexican Mike came a group of Tongans from East Oakland from 96. I, I thank God for whoever might have been, you know, up to no good where those dudes had to be activated. But, uh, hey, Mike used to roll around with them dudes when he went to do collections on, on the other part of the business, on the, on the Colombian aspect of the business that he had. Man, that was a fucking defensive line, bro. And they took joy in doing weird shit to people. Like, <laughs> I've heard stories, you know, I'm not going to repeat them because they're still around and still active, but stories of them like doing weird stuff to people and them laughing at each other and trying to outdo each other oh ho, ho, watch this hey bro check this out i was in these apartments one time man in pleasant hill california of all places nice neighborhood you know upper upper middle class there's one set of apartments right on contra costa boulevard that were really really ghetto in the 90s just one little area i had that sold up as well I'm, I'm there one time handling some business, man, face to face, which I very rarely dealt, which I really, really did. And Mike was in the area. He hit me up on the damn pager. I call him back from this girl's little cordless phone. I'm out there about the pool. And I'm like, uh, he's like, he's at the mall in Concord. I'm, I'm like a mile down the same street. And I'm like, yeah, slide through, man. I got some loot for you anyway, whatever, whatever. And he was going to pick me up and we were going to go do something. Man, he pulls up, bro, and this is the first time I met the Tongans, bro. Man, they just start piling out of his van like, what in the fuck? I'm starting to wonder if I got funk, bro. <laughs> you know, like Mike's mad at me or something, bro, because I swear to God, they were all your height and at least your size. And you're you're one of the biggest motherfuckers I know by far. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, oh, we. He's like, oh, yeah, this is the squad, and he introduced me to him. Hey, and you've seen people actually coming out of their apartments, like on the balconies and shit like staring like what in the fuck who fucked up because they're about that life and i think i said this story before even even the females bro did i tell you a story about the little dude who said oh that's a big bitch yeah 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 it's knocked him out. in oakland bro i go out there to buy a mitsubishi montero or something bro and uh we're playing dominoes eating drinking <clears throat> the broad dude she's got to be 320 and she ain't fat bro she She'll knock you out, bro. She's like your size, man. But it may be a little heavier, like six something. Little dude, little dude's walking by. She goes to check the mail. He's like, oh, use a big in or something like that. She's devastating. Bro. It looked like he got hit by a car, bro. And that's how it sounded, like a baseball bat hitting a watermelon. And and hey, the Tongan dudes, they don't even move. They're just like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, dude, they were crazy, bro. But we never had to implement them because... I was anti that shit because that's the first thing people do out there because the organization had a whole, as a whole, 
didn't have that fear factor out there at that point in time. Now it's out there. You know, you know, these people are that and you try to either shy away from it or, or they've evolved, bro. They everything's like, evolved. Everything's evolved, bro. Like all the hoods are like, you know I mean like, and they learn from other people's mistakes. You know what I mean? Yeah. But everything that that's no matter what, how big of, of an empire you start to build for yourself, I'm gonna call it, well, let's call it enterprise. Whatever enterprise operations you have going on there, it's all gonna be short lived either way. People are gonna get busted, indictments are gonna come. You know what I mean? And, and there's no future in it, man. I mean, I, I can only imagine how things are today, man. But, you know, um, there's a lot more stories I'm going to be talking about, man, like some crazy shit. There's some stuff that me and Rojo have discussed off air that we both know about that we can't even do videos on, man. It's just that sensitive. It's, it's just that real. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we can disclose a little bit of some of the stuff that we used to do. And, you know, today's spiel, I thought, man, let's, let's, let's get a little comical of the situation when Flacco thought he was getting hit. Yeah. Hey, hey, man, that, hey, the same type of shit happened to me. I mean, I didn't think it was no funk, but in one week, I had two weapons that other people accidentally discharged very near my presence, bro, in one week. My boy Junior came out the shower. He had a tray eight, and for whatever reason, he had it cocked back. It fell out of his bedroll, hit the ground, pow, goes off in the house. Like, what the yeah. fuck, man? Hey, a few days later, my homeboy Big Louie, this is up in Yuba City, homeboy Big Louie from up there. He's cleaning the four or five. I don't know what the hell happened. Blew a hole in the couch right in front of him that a girl was sitting on, man, like this far from her, right into the arm of the couch. Bro, almost blew her away. She was a little low thing. She couldn't have handled that 45. It's just like, trig, man, gun safety. Come, man, what the hell, bro? You should never have bro, a fire. I yelled, like I said, bro. You should have to run around with the knife. <laughs> bro, I yelled out, they're trying to kill me. And I ducked to the floor because the window weak, was right bro. there. I ain't gonna huh? lie, I wouldn't have been able to breathe. I'd have been fanning myself, falling out of the chair. Like, get, what the fuck? <laughs> oh man. And the homeboy's there with a fuck. Hey, the homeboy's there with a fucking dumb grin like this, man. Then after I regained my composure, I'm like, oh shit, get everything out of here, man. Then you had to, then you then hey. your stomach hurt and you had to go poop a little bit. <laughs> hey. No, 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 no. Check this out. Because I went and well, look, I went and got those those cuetes because of the situation that happened with the Asians from one of my partners, right? I wanted to give them back because I don't, you know how it is out there. Unless you really need them, you don't keep them on you everywhere you go, especially being on parole. So when I went to return them, eh, I go, hey, sorry, man, there's one's been discharged, eh? Bro, yeah, that's they were nice, though. Happened, bro, they were nice, hey, bro. Nobody got hit. Hey, it is what it is. It happens, bro, but fuck, bro. Today's lesson, if you're not firearm proficient, Carry a knife. Remember when you dropped that clip, there's still one in the chamber, too. Bro. Because hey, that's there's not the only person. on YouTube you can watch about gun safety, and these white boys will teach you. Like, we're, not promoting, we're not promoting none of that stuff. We're just talking about it, man. But there's been people who've been whacked, I'm saying, by accident because of that, man. Anyways, I, I hope you guys enjoyed the story, man. Last story before we sign off. I had a homeboy in middle school, bro. They were partying, and uh, they, found, they found a gun inside the dad's house with the little kid. They were partying at my homeboy, uh, Tony Bennett and Maurice. They played football with me. And uh, man, my boy Maurice took a three, five, seven all the way through him, bro. I mean, he survived somehow, you know what I mean? But it's just like, bro, guns aren't toys. They're tools to be used for a job. And just like you can mess yourself up with a skill saw, sawzall, don't play with guns, bro. Take a course, do something, have some common sense. Anyway, or don't touch me. Some funny stories with your boy Rojo, Big Flacco. Uh, hope you guys are having an easy Monday and uh, have a good work week, productive, stay out of prison, don't break the law. And whatever you do, don't take your van and run it through a bunch of innocent people. You know what I mean? Get your life together. Yeah, man. We're out of here. Have a good day. Appreciate each and every one of you.